Good morning and a happy Sabbath day. Today we are going to talk about righteousness by faith in three phases in the light of the creation week. We are studying righteousness by faith in three aspects and in the future videos we are going to correlate these studies with the three angels messages we can see how these phases of righteousness by faith is connected exactly with the three angels message but for today we are going to see the message of righteousness by faith according to the light of the creation week before we proceed in studying the book of genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2 verses 1 to 3 we are going to ask the blessing of god shall we pray father in heaven as we will start this lesson from the creation week we ask that you guide us through in jesus name we pray amen if you are going to study genesis chapter 1 and the early part of chapter 2 we will see three things in here we are going to divide the, the seven days into three parts the first part day one up to day three is under the aspect of what i called forming f-o-r-m-i-n-g forming and the second aspect from day four to day six is in the aspect of feeling f-i-l-l-i-n-g feeling and the third part is in the aspect of sealing s-e-a-l-i-n-g so we have forming feeling and sealing in the first part we will see how god had begun the work in preparation preparation of the earth and when the earth is prepared he began to fill the earth and including the skies and when he had done filling the earth he kept it or he sealed it so we have three parts in here this is righteousness by faith in three phases we can see in the first part the forming is talking about how god justify the person we call it the justification by faith and in the second part sanctification how god when he set apart the person he would like that person to function to fulfill his will to fulfill it in full and then the third part when his work in that soul is finished accomplished he will put the seal of completion so let's begin the first part and the first part the first day we can see here the condition 
of the earth. But let's begin at the first verse. It says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So that's the main title or introduction that it is or it was God who created the heavens and the earth. In verse 2, is speaking of the condition of the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. In this verse, we can see that the condition of the earth it's empty. It has no form. It is in darkness. It is the same thing with the sinner. We are in darkness. But then, God didn't leave us behind. God sent the Spirit to convict the soul, to move upon the face of the waters. It is moving us to convict us so that it will create a sense of need of God. In verse 3 says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. So when God moved his spirit upon the face of the waters god sent it with his word and his word says let there be light and it was fulfilled so the light came and in verse 5 says and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening in the morning were the first day. So at the first day, God sent the light by speaking the light. If we will consider it, we are in darkness. For example, we are not converted yet. So what we need in Romans Chapter 1, 16 and 17, he sent the gospel. It declares the love, the righteousness of God. And so when we hear the word of God, according to Romans 10, 17, that word brings faith or a choice. Because in the darkness, we when we were in darkness, we don't have a choice of light. But when light came, it gave us the choice of light. So, when the light came, now we can have the power to choose it. Because it's with a package. In the package, God gave the word faith. So we can activate that faith by our choice. So from being a sinner, when the light of God's word arrives and we see that God is light, God is good, God is love, and we are the one that is the, in the darkness, meaning we are in the opposite side. And see the goodness of God. We are not good and we trust that God is good. We believe that He is good and we accepted that He is good and that light shone upon us. Now, we will talk about that more in the feeling side after. Now, let's go to the second day. And in the second day from verses 6 to 8, it says, And God said, Let there be permanent, permanent in the midst of the waters, 
and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divide the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament, what? Heaven. And the evening and morning were the second day. Today, this is an exciting thing. When God's word arrived, or the light arrived at the first day, the sec when the second day came, God divided the sky and the waters. So when He divided that, you will see that now we have what we call the sky and the seas. Now what is the significance of this essence in what we call righteousness by faith? So when the word of God arrived and gave us faith, it gave us the conviction, it gave us the essence and the sense that God is good and we need to be converted from the life of darkness to the life of light. And in this essence, we can see water and skies. In Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, you will see there the experience of Jesus when he was baptized by uh, John, John the Baptist. So if you have your Bibles, open it to uh, popular uh, verses with regards to the baptism of Christ. It says here, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lighting upon him and to a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased so in this aspect god is forming our life through what we call baptism when we get convicted we need to be converted. We need to die from that life in order to live a new life. When Jesus was baptized, he was buried into the watery grave. And then when he was removed from the water, and lo, heaven is open. See, this second day is talking about water and heaven or the sky. And when the sky was opened, we, we, we will see there, the voice of God came and says, This is my beloved Son in whom I will please. We can see here, the Spirit of God, when the sky was opened, came upon Jesus. I remember with my experience, when I was uh, just beginning uh, my early part of conversion, when the Spirit of God came upon me, I saw it like a person, as a person. The same thing is being described in this Genesis. So we, we can see here that the second day is speaking of baptism. In John chapter 3, verse 3, it says, let's go there. It's better to read it. John chapter uh, 3, verse 3. It says here, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In verse 5 also says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Water, sky. 
water, baptism by water, sky, baptism by the Spirit, which was the experience of Jesus Christ. Now, let's go to the third uh, day about how God divided the water and the earth, creating a dry land and the vegetation. Let's read from verse 9. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called the seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after this kind, his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was what? That it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. So we can see the vegetation came has been created by God. Now we can see the division. Now there's a sky, there is water, and now there's land, and then the vegetations. The vegetation that God created is the beginning of life. That's the first living forms that God made on earth. There were no animals yet at that time, but first the vegetation. So when God formed the earth, He formed a house. He put a light so that it can see what it needs. He separated the water in the sky so that the water will become the habitations. One for the birds and one for the fish. And in the third day, you can see now God put vegetation. Not only a house for the animals, but food for those animated things. Now we can see here, why the vegetation? What is the relationship of that in food? forming a new life let's read second corinthians chapter 5 13 and 17 second corinthians chapter 5 16 and uh, 13 to 17 let's read for whether we be beside ourselves it is to god or whether we be sober it is for your cause for the love of christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if we one died for all then we were all dead and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh yea though we have known christ after the flesh Yet now henceforth know him no more. Wherefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, things are become new. So it says here in verse 17, Now there is a, a new creation. We became new creature. New life, in other words. Now, the third day is about the new life that appeared on earth. So we can see here, if the second day speaks of baptism, it's also speaking of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ for us. And that through our baptism, we identify that we died, we get buried, and we get resurrected with Jesus Christ, and we become a new creation now we become the 
habitation of God. We became the temple of the living God. There is a quotation here that in this sense of forming, it's all about beginning the new life we call born again. It says, being born again, justified, converted. This is the beginning. But what about growing up into Christ? What about that lifetime experience we sometimes call sanctification? Truly born again Christians not only talk about Christ, but live lives that testify that things are, in fact, followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. True Revival page. 7 paragraph 4 in other words when the new life comes you start breathing you start doing something so we receive the beginning of what we call sanctification we are made to start to grow now it goes now in connection to the second part the second part we call it the filling and the word filling to fill is to fulfill and it is about fulfilling the laws of God or fulfilling good works or fulfilling the righteous life which is feeling in accordance to the principles of heaven so if part one is about form the second part the feeling is about principles when you talk about principles it's about the principles of life the principles on how to live a righteous life now let's uh, look again because the book of Genesis in, in a form of uh, chiasm, there is parallelism. Day one is in parallel to day four. Day two is in parallel to day five. And day three is in parallel with day six. But let's go to day four. We can see here it's speaking of the light. So in day 4 says in verse 14 up to verse 19, let's read. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them for the lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to, to rule the night and the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and the evening and morning were the fourth day. In the form, God said, let there be light. But here in the filling, God filled the firmament of heaven with two kinds of light. The bigger light and the lesser light. The, the, there are two kinds of lesser light. The moon and then the stars. The bigger light is, is the sun. When we got into the conversion part of life in the sanctification side, we begin what we call the new life. And in that life, we begin to search the scriptures like those people in Thessalonica in reference to Acts chapter 17 verse 11. They search the scriptures if what they heard is what is true. Whatever you hear from any preachers and so on, you have to compare it to the scriptures. 
in your conversion, you don't know everything or many things about what to follow, what things to do. It is a beginning of what we call learning process. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, 15 to 17, God gave all the scripture, the inspired writing, so that it will bring us the learning needed so that we can become complete in essence of doing the righteousness. In Psalm 119, 105 says, Thy word is a light unto my feet and a light unto my path. So, in this essence, in this fourth day, speaking of the first love experience with God, and in that first love experience, we love so much the Word of God. We devour the Bible. I experienced that. I remembered when I got into that first love experience with the Lord. I cannot stop reading the whole scriptures, marking it, studying it, learning, swallowing, chewing, everything I can get from the Word of God. And this is the experience that we need. Once we became a new person, it has to be filled with the light of God, with the Word of God. Now, let's go to day 5. Verse 20 to 23, it says, And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that had life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind and God saw it, it was good, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fall multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So in the fifth day, is about multiplying. Multiplying what is in the sky, the birds, and in the waters. And on earth, multiplying means growing. Let our spirituality grow. Our experience grow. About skies is the spirituality. How we become like birds flying swiftly from place to place sharing the word of god when you share the more you grow and the more you grow the more you share let's read matthew 28 18 to 20. in this essence sharing the gospel is like having the experience of the fifth day we are letting our lives or Christian experiences to multiply. Verse 18 says of Matthew 28, And Jesus said, Come and speak to, him, to them, saying, All power is given. He's talking about authority. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. You can see the words here, heaven and in earth. You will see that in the fifth day, with regards to heaven, in earth, with regards to what? Going to be fruitful and multiply. 
in order to multiply disciples, God commanded through Jesus Christ for us to go. To go like the birds. To go like the sea animals. Teaching all nations. Baptizing all of them. And letting them to observe or to do all things whatsoever God had commanded us to do. And He will be with us and to the end of the world. So we have to let them be converted, be baptized in the name of who? The Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Now let's go to day number six when God created land animals and mankind. Verse 24 up to the end of this chapter, chapter 1. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth, after his kind and God saw that it was good and God said let us make man in our image in our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the earth and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so God created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them and god blessed them and god said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish in the sea and over the fowl of the earth and every living thing that moveth upon the earth and god said behold i have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of tree yielding seed to you it shall be for me and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the earth the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life i have given every green herb for meat and it was so and god saw everything that he made and behold it was very good and the evening and the morning were the sixth day so we can see here god first created the animals and then he created mankind and he made them in the, his own image we remember must remember we're going to have another topic about this with the image of god in which we can see here that he tagged in man the the price of himself that is only himself can pay the man let's read about romans 8 29 what is the essence why man in the uh, last part of this the feeling the fulfilling of god's purpose in life can be accomplished let's read it in verse 29 for whom he did foreknow he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn um among many brethren so we can see here that god's purpose when you got converted in, in growing into this experience the the part that we have to to reach is to conform in the image of jesus christ image in the uttermost sense 
we call the character sense, not just the physical essence, but in our will. First, uh, let's let's see Colossians. I mean, chapter two, six to eleven. Colossians chapter 2, 6 to 11. It says here, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophies and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and we are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power, to whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting of the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So, We need to be complete. The word complete there. Perfect. In Jesus Christ. That's the essence of the first part. We need to completely fulfill the righteousness of Jesus Christ in our self in obedience to his word. So it will only be fulfilled. When we are growing, <clears throat> excuse me, in the light of God by searching the scriptures and by sharing uh, and experiencing the growth of the good works in us. It is not about our power, but it is about the power that God gave in us. That power is in the life, in the life of Jesus Christ. Now we have the third part. Since we are uh, short in time, let's read chapter 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made and rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day. And sanctified it because that it is that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So there is what we call quality control. When you check, oh, everything is, is very good, he says. So let's stop working. It's finished, is is accomplished. Our purpose is done. So God rested. On the seventh day and this is the sealing part and in Isaiah chapter 66 verse 23 in the new heaven and in the new earth people will come before him in the new moon and in the Sabbath day Ezekiel 46 6 is telling us the same thing uh, 46 verse 3 so the word Sabbath is associated with what we call worship. I think it's very important to read that. Uh, 46. Let's see. Verse uh, 3. Likewise, the people of the land shall worship at the door of this gate before the Lord in the Sabbath and in the new Moons. It's the same thing with Isaiah 66 verse 23. It is with the word worship. Now, the Sabbath is the sign that God put between him and his people. Ezekiel 20 verse 12. It is the sign that God is the one that sanctify. When we say sign, it is associated with a seal. It's like having a flag with the seal in it, the mark of authority. Romans 4.11, sign and seal, they are being put as 
uh, together or synonymous because when you have a flag or a sign it has to to be a mark or a seal that uh, you are showing something it is a seal of loyalty now we can see here god ended his work when the work is finished so he rested he blessed it and he sanctified it he set it apart for the purpose of what we call securing creation it's like this since we have three parts you get first the water bottle you have cleaned it up you have emptied it of anything you make it secure but you let it open and then you begin to fill it with water once you fill it with clean drinking water what do you have to do are you going to leave it open open from any contamination no what you have you have also what we, you call cup you cap it you cover it and then when you cover it you put your name and says this water bottle filled with clean water this is mine i put my name in it it has my saliva so you are not allowed to drink it only me it's mine god said it is mine i secured this creation it's now mine in the righteousness by faith when we accepted and we let him fill us with the goodness through good works and sealed him in this what we call the replication of his character he kept it he secured it and saying now this person is completely mine quality control you will see the tag q c and it's is ready for heaven so brothers and sisters friends and listeners righteousness by faith has three parts and we can see here in the light of the creation and creation the opposite of creation the creation and then you need to have recreation so following the same principle god creates in us a new life he formed a new life he filled that new life and he will seal that life we need these three aspects of righteousness so may the lord bless you in listening this uh, series we have more i'm going to prepare another video and that video is about how this righteousness by faith in three faces connected with what we call the everlasting gospel and also with the three angels messages god bless see you next time